There's only one person did well tonight, Donald Trump, I will tell you. Sure. Next on Newsmax Prime, Donald Trump triumphs on Tuesday night, sounding a winning note in three states, while Ted Cruz claims victory in a fourth. How much longer will it be a four-man race for the Republicans? Also coming up, Hillary feels the burn in Michigan, and Iran conducts ominous missile tests. You've come to the right place for news and opinion. This is Newsmax TV, and Newsmax Prime starts right now. Good evening and welcome to the Wednesday edition of Newsmax Prime. I'm J.D. Hayworth. Of prime interest tonight, three, one, none. That's the breakdown following last night's Republican contests in four very different states. Donald Trump pulled off three wins, Ted Cruz a single triumph, but no victories for Marco Rubio or John Kasich. Miranda Kahn recaps the results. J.D., Mr. Trump triumphed in Michigan, Mississippi, and Hawaii, while Senator Cruz claimed a win in Idaho. That means Trump added another 71 delegates to his total. Cruz picked up an additional 56, and John Kasich added 17. But Marco Rubio failed to win a single delegate last night. In the overall delegate count, Mr. Trump has 458, Senator Cruz 359, Senator Rubio stands pat at 151, while Governor Kasich trails far behind with just 54. In the wake of his wins, the frontrunner again called for party unity last night. Believe it or not, I am a unifier. I unify. I mean, you look at all of the things I built all over the world. I'm a unifier. I get along with people. I think it's time to unify. We have something special going in the Republican Party, and unfortunately, the people in the party, they call them the elites, or they call them whatever they call them, but those are the people that don't respect it yet. In a hundred years, what's happening now to the Republican Party has never happened before. And the people in the party, whether you call them establishment or not, you can call them anything. I don't know if there is such a thing as the establishment, frankly. But whether you call them the establishment or not, they should embrace it. They should, you know, the Democrats would love to have what's happening. Now, if Rubio and Kasich are looking for good news out of their respective home states, it doesn't look promising. The latest Quinnipiac poll from Florida shows Donald Trump at 45 percent. That doubles home state Senator Marco Rubio, who comes in at 22 percent. Senator Ted Cruz comes in at 18, while John Kasich comes in at 8 percent. Meanwhile, in Ohio, Trump leads home state Governor John Kasich by a smaller margin. Trump comes in at 38 percent to Kasich's 32 percent. Senator Cruz comes in at 16 percent, while Senator Rubio comes in at 9 percent. Both Ohio and Florida are winner-take-all states, so all the remaining candidates are doing all they can to win over voters. That's why this morning in Miami, Carly Fiorina endorsed Ted Cruz. And so it is time now to unite behind the one man who can beat Donald Trump, who can beat Hillary Clinton, who can beat the D.C. cartel. It is time to unite behind Ted Cruz, ladies and gentlemen, the next president of the United States. Isn't Carly extraordinary? We just heard a whole bunch of Democratic activists and Hillary supporters going, holy cow, what was that? You can expect more endorsements and announcements in the remaining days as we head into next Tuesday, which should be a big one. J.D., back to you. Thanks, Miranda. For more on all of this, we're pleased to be joined now by the former lieutenant governor of the state of New York, Betsy McCoy. Betsy Skypes in tonight from Connecticut and Skyping in from the heartland, the Hawkeye state of Iowa. We have syndicated radio host Steve Dace. Steve is the author of a great new book entitled A Nefarious Plot. Thanks to you both for joining us here on Newsmax Prime. Steve, we'll talk to you about your book later this week, but let's talk about what happened Tuesday night. Trump winning three out of four states, wasn't close in Michigan or Mississippi. Trump has won 15 of 24 overall, as opposed to Ted Cruz and his seven victories. Steve, does your candidate, Ted Cruz, need to start winning more states in order to be a viable alternative to Donald Trump? 
Well, J.D., I think he's proven he's the only alternative to Donald Trump. And when you look at the delegate map, it's not really any different from last night than it was going into last night. Uh, we're still on a very difficult path for anybody to get to 1237. If you took a look at the total popular vote last night, I think it went 37 Trump, 35 Cruz when he went across the board. Uh, if you look at delegates since Super Tuesday, Trump is 128, Cruz is 126. So it's very simple. I mean, if folks don't want Donald Trump to be the nominee, and I agree with the clip you played, Trump is a unifier. He is unifying practically the entire conservative movement at this point against him. And I think you will see that in the next week or so, Fiorina being the first shoe to drop. And the exit showed last night and the public polling shows and a one-on-one, -on -one, Ted Cruz trounces Donald Trump. And I think that's where we're headed. Uh, Betsy, go ahead. Well, first of all, what's really clear from last night is that the United States of America is trumping and cruising. They're not interested in anybody else. It's a two-man race, and there's a lot of enthusiasm for both of them. But to say that the conservative movement is uniting around Ted Cruz, whom I like very much, by the way, to the uh, exclusion of Donald Trump, certainly is not true, because Trump is speaking to the people who generally aren't even interested in voting anymore. They're so disgusted with the political establishment. So if you want to win with a big turnout, you can't write off Ted Cruz. Uh, you, excuse me, you can't write off Donald Trump. He's the one who's increasing the turnout by roughly 24 uh, percent. Betsy, let me continue with you as we try to reestablish contact with Steve Dace. Uh, the folks in the establishment, uh, we heard it was a panic. You take a look at where they stand. They're basically two for 24 with Rubio uh, taking a state like Minnesota and the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico, which doesn't have an active hand really in selecting the president. My question is this, will the establishment in fact reluctantly join Ted Cruz or are they going to make a last hurrah with John Kasich? What is your instinct? There is absolutely no plausibility to the Kasich campaign. It's a two-man race at this point, Trump or Cruz. And the fact is Trump has demonstrated something that no other candidate in recent history put up by the Republican Party is able to do, and that is to really ignite the non-voter, the infrequent voter, the Democrat, the independent. He has put together the dream coalition that the GOP has hoped for for a decade or more. Steve Dace, back to you. You know, last week we heard Lindsey Graham, a guy with whom I served, but with whom I rarely agree, ruminating on national television that despite all the bad things he had said about Ted Cruz, he might be able to get behind him. Some folks see that, given the tenor of these times, and they go, aha, Cruz must really be more of an establishment conservative. What do you say to those folks? Well, you know, we're going to need people that don't agree with us to vote for us. I mean, that's what uh, that's what Betsy was just bragging about, is Trump's ability to bring new people into the process. So, I mean, at some point, you've got to get a majority of the vote. I think that's the problem with Donald Trump. And while you're seeing more establishment people are taking a look now at Ted Cruz, it's not that Cruz is modified. He's not any more moderate than he was when I endorsed him in August. The difference is today's ABC News Washington Post poll, J.D., Trump's unfavorability is minus 67, the highest of any domestic politician in the history of that poll. And that's after months of the most favorable and extensive media coverage he could have possibly asked for. That is catastrophic for everybody that shares a ballot with him, should he be the nominee in November. Uh, we would okay, be remiss. Go, go ahead, Betsy, go ahead. If Ted Cruz wants to bring more people over who are toying or dallying with voting for Donald Trump, he's got to really focus in on the loss of jobs, the terrible trade deals, and the, the fact that middle class people in this country can no longer afford to support their families and pay their taxes. He's got to really start talking about that to the exclusion of all the esoteric constitutional issues. I love the Constitution. I have a PhD in that subject. But Ted Cruz has to start talking about what's keeping people awake at night. We've got about two and a half minutes left. So let me turn to something. Steve, we know you're on the radio with a national audience nightly. Earlier today, speaking with his national audience, Rush Limbaugh seemed to be echoing Carly Fiorina. Of course, Carly endorsing Ted Cruz, as Miranda reported earlier. Let's listen to the way Rush Limbaugh put it today. So really a week from yesterday will tell the tale. 
But it does begin to look like the 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 uh, establishment has no choice. That if they do want to deny Trump, they're going to have to coalesce behind Cruz. Uh, your take on that, Steve? Well, it's simple reality. I mean, Ted Cruz has done in this campaign what he set out to do. He set out to coalesce conservatives. Uh, he ended up uh, being the last movement conservative standing. Uh, and then it was about bringing people into the fold that traditionally have not worked together to form a winning coalition, the likes of which we have not seen in a couple of decades. And he's doing that now. And, and I, I'll, I'll defer to Betsy on one point she made a moment ago. And that's why I think if she were to listen to what uh, Ted had to say this morning in Florida, she would have liked that speech quite a bit. While I have a lot of issues with, uh, with Trump's antics, with his progressive beliefs, I will give Trump and his campaign and those supporting him credit on this point. They have brought into the mainstream populist economic issues that the system long ago could have addressed but chose not to and ignored. And I would agree that whoever the Republican nominee is, it would be wise for them to pick up those themes. I just think a guy being audited by the IRS regularly and being investigated for fraud, probably not the greatest champion for those issues on a national platform. Uh, Betsy, about 30 seconds. Can Trump continue to sound the populist theme and ride that to the Republican nomination? Well, he's certainly going to try it. But uh, as I pointed out, it is a much harder road for Trump now that it's a two-man race. When it was three or four or five, he was the clear winner. Now that it's mano a mano and we're just Trumpin' and cruising, it's much harder to predict. Trumpin' and cruising and talking to Betsy and Steve, and uh, you both have our thanks. Steve, again, we're going to talk to you later this week about that great new book, A Nefarious Plot. What is afoot here? Well, not a nefarious plot, but some great programming notes. Uh, for example, tomorrow night, following the next Republican debate, you will be able to join us for our Newsmax post-debate special, again at 11 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock Pacific, tomorrow night, right here on Newsmax TV. I'll be pleased to be back behind uh, the anchor desk. And we're heading down on the road for very important program this weekend. Saturday, join Newsmax TV for Battleground Florida. We will come to you live from Miami starting Saturday morning at 8 o'clock Eastern. A whole lot of special guests. We will help set the stage for Super Tuesday 2 on March 15th by getting together Saturday morning at 8 right here on Newsmax TV. So you heard what Betsy and Steve had to say. Agree or disagree with their observations on the campaign? Why don't you send me your comments at NewsmaxTV.com slash comments. And when we come back, more on the campaign with our political panel. So stay with us.